welcome to another episode of Community Voices. My name is Omar, your host, Senior Cultural Partnership Strategist of Finish Line and JD. Today we got a very special episode. We got Aaron Donald and Erica Sherman. How are you guys doing? Doing great, doing man. Well. Thanks for having us. Yes. Yeah, the pleasure is ours. So, you know, um, let's get right, let's get right into it. You know, uh, obviously we know how important Pittsburgh is you having gone there, school there. So Tell the world about, you know, some of the experiences you had uh, growing up in, in Pittsburgh. Um, well, you know, growing up in a city, obviously, you know, you got the good, you got the bad, you know. Um, you know, ha- had a mom and dad that structured me the right way. But, you know, once you go outside the house, you know, there's still a lot of different obstacle courses that you got to jump and go through, yeah. you know, with different friends you have in life that, you know, um, you know, sometimes they're making a bad decision and you just being around somebody, pitch you in that, you know, situation you don't want to be in so um just learning how to move through that so um you know it, it was a lot you know but I, I feel like that all helped mold me and build me to who I am who I am today so amazing what about you Erica um so while I did not grow up um in Pittsburgh you know I I kind of grew up all over um just with being on the board of the foundation and um, understanding Aaron's story and working closely with him and working closely with um, the kids in the cohort, which we'll get to later and and Mm -hmm. understanding the challenges that they face, just being from um, lower economic areas. um, That's why I think Aaron is somebody that they can relate to so well because he gets it, he understands it. And, and, um, you know, he's somebody where he always says when, young people look at him or look up to him. He doesn't, he doesn't want them to see him as Aaron Donald, this amazing, you know, football player. He doesn't call himself amazing, but I do. Um, You know, this amazing football player, but you know, he wants them to just see him as just somebody who grew up, who had discipline, who worked hard, who earned everything that they have. And no matter what your situation or where you come from, you can really just become anything. Absolutely. So I know one of the biggest uh, areas that you really invested in is nutrition. So speak on, you know, its importance to you. And is like, especially when you, you speak about like a Pittsburgh, for example, you and me from the Bronx, where, you know, the communities we grew up in didn't have access to, to like mm-hmm. appropriate foods where you see like a McDonald's on every corner and then you yeah, get more yeah. into the city then you see like the whole foods more like, you know, healthier foods and, you know, clean food. So speak on that. Um, well, I, I really got big in nutrition as I got older, you know, being at this level, just, you know, as you get older, you start trying to find different ways to um, help your body recover and, and start learning about that. And at the same time, you you want to look good. I, I like taking my shirt off on the beach and things like that. So, <laughs> um, you know, just learning that and, and, and seeing, you know, what it did for me and how it changed my body and how, it, you know, helped my recovery cover so much as far as you know what, what I'm consuming what I'm picking into my body and you, and you trying to you know speak that and, and tell the kids that at a young age so you know they ain't got to wait too long to do it but you know going to the point where you know and it's hard for a lot of kids that had opportunity to, to get, eat eat right and eat the right way just in, in their circus um, situations they in so um you know me being you know part owner and my ready water protein you know we try to do a lot of things with our foundation and you know to get things to them to the point where you know that I can give them some knowledge on what they consume and what they take in and, and what can help them. So um, we try to do different things like that. And um, even Erica could speak more on, you know, exactly. For sure. Um, just, you know, as Aaron touched on access to um, nutritional food and forming healthy eating habits are so important and they're really vital to um, long-term health. Um, they're vital to your academics. They're vital mm-hmm. to your athletic success. If you, you are in sports, um, and you know, like you touched on Omar, it's really hard to achieve them, a- achieve these resources in, um, lower income areas, just because they're not readily available. Um, and sometimes they're not even as affordable as the unhealthier food. So, um, what we do with 8099 solutions is we partner with companies like ready nutrition, Aaron touched on, you know, he's a part owner there and with, um, nonprofits like greater Pittsburgh community food bank and, um, you know, partnering with organizations like that are really critical in our effort to get um, just just to get um, other educational 
um, and food resources for um, for lower income areas and and just for underserved communities. And definitely, and even for me, just like growing up and feeling way different compared to like when I eat McDonald's and play basketball versus like I eat some fruit and some vegetables and play. Exactly. Basketball. You, you, you can feel that difference from your body. You know, you yeah. be like, you know, you feel like you get tired a little fast or, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's just sitting the wrong way. So yes. and we, we all felt that as a kid growing up, felt that now when you eat something bad now. Especially so. now as you're older. Yeah, a hundred percent. So uh, that's yeah. what I really, you know, that's what got so big, big with me. Cause you know, instead of eating a, a, a cheeseburger every day, you know, that that kind of you know was messing my body up you going out there hitting every single day and then you go eat a cheeseburger and you think that you still you know working because you work so hard you can you can reward yourself every day like that but mm-hmm. you know you, you got to take care of your body it's huge for as far as you know long-term health and just like you know for me in my profession just you know my recovery I, that's just so huge with me so um I just try to get that knowledge to them kids so definitely and nutrition and athletics go hand in hand. So speak on the experience that athletics, um, or rather the importance of it in your life. You think about like high school going to college and now in the league and just speak on that entire experience. Oh, well, it was huge. You know, um, you know I, I grew up in a football house. So, you know, football was something that, you know, we kind of gravitated to at a young age. Um, but, you know, with, I feel like what sports did for me, you know, obviously I said I, I had a mom and dad that was great, but, you know, we, we still make a decision outside the household. You know, we, we still got friends and things we do in the inner city when you round certain things, but, you know, sp- sports kind of kept me away from that, you know, kept me focused, kept me having a dream mm-hmm. and, and un- having an understanding that if I chose to do something the wrong way, that can, that can affect what I'm trying to get to, you know, and that's being in the national football league. So, um, you know, having an opportunity to, you know, play football, I started playing football, when I was five, six years old, you know, that, that kind of, as I, as I worked, as I played, you know, you get discipline, you know, you get all different types of things just from playing sports. So um, having an opportunity to, to bring sports into my life was like, you know, life changing, if you can say so, because you, you kind of, you know, learn discipline, you, you kind of learn how to carry yourself, not just from sports, from just playing football, but through your everyday life. So um, it, it was huge for me, you know, and at the same time, you know, you got practice every day. So it kind of keep you from, you know, being in them bad situations or being in situations or areas where you don't need to be, you know, because at any time, anything can happen. So it kind of, you know, keep the street, you know, and like you mentioned earlier, you know, being at the wrong place at the wrong time around like the wrong people. Exactly. Just because you associate with them, anything can happen. Exactly. Because I, again, like I said, I had a lot of friends that been in and out of jails. I got friends that was murdered, you know, and and just imagine if I didn't have sports and I chose to hang with my friend that day that got murdered, you know, you, you mm-hmm. never know, you know, it could have been me, you know, or hanging with a friend that got locked up cause he wanted to carry a gun, you know, and I was with him. I, that could have been me, you know, it's, yeah. it's stuff like that, that, you know, you, you don't look at, but if you, you really, it could have been one little decision I could have made in life or been in a situation where, you know, it, it could have affected everything. Like I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't have the opportunity to create a foundation and, and help these kids. You know, I wouldn't be the opportunity you know, to be on this platform, to have the opportunity to, to even, um, you know, do do things like this. So, um, you know, you, you got to have that type of mindset. You know, my dad always told me, you know, we alphas, you know, we, we lead, we don't follow. So, yeah. you know, if, if a bunch of your friends, you, you chilling with, want to go sell drugs or, or do something, you know, and that's something that you don't want to do, you, you be a leader and you walk away from that. So um, I had the opportunity to, to, to um, learn that from my dad. And, you know, we know that these kids don't get the opportunity to have parents and fathers that can do that. So, creating this foundation and having mentors and having me that I had opportunity to, to talk for a kid for two minutes or five minutes, you know, that, that can be life changing for them. You know, it's, it's all about, um, you know, the jewels you give them, the little knowledge you can give to them, you know, and again, you know, I, I'm in this platform to the point they look up to me. And at the same time, I come from the, from the inner city in certain situations that, you know, they probably been through or going through. So I can relate with them, you know, so that kind of make them gravitate to me, feel that what I'm saying is real and what I'm doing is real. And, um, and they tend to listen, so. Absolutely, and then, your story. In addition to that, sorry, not to add on too no, much, but they take everything that they're learning and everything that's being instilled in them and then they become the leaders to their peers. Mm-hmm. And so it's continuing to spread just one individual at a time. And mm-hmm. you know, before you know it, you're impacting a large number of people. And that's how you build your community up. You know, it, it, exactly. it start with one, but you need, you need a, create the next generation and next generation to do the same and continue to build and grow something big, you know, 
Um, because it, it starts with one person, one person can't do it, but you know, you continue to get that knowledge and they continue to give it to the next person and the next person, you know, that that's what makes it huge. Absolutely. Then the, the kids look at your story and see, like, all right, cool, Aaron was able to do this, and I should be able to do it too, as far as like staying off the street, staying like in your local rec center or a gym, and you know, just staying occupied so you don't get caught up in you know situations that you definitely should be. So 100%. Yep. So Pittsburgh, you move out to LA with the Rams. I'm sure that's like night and day. And you found like tremendous success in the NFL. So how much of those experiences and growing up in, in Pittsburgh do you attribute to your success today? Um, everything. You know, that's, Pittsburgh molded me who I am. Um, obviously, I had my dad that, you know, I looked up to that had me in the weight room at an early age that, you know, always taught me the things that I needed to know as far as, you know, discipline and hard work and work ethic to, for me to, you know, to do these things. But, you know, um, and I always say I had a lot of good, you know, but I had a lot of bad growing up as well. You know, I, I talked about, you know, my friend situations growing up, friends being murdered. I feel like, um, you know, you, you got them times when you said and, and things happen, but, you know, I, I, that kind of motivates you to, you know, to make a decision to the point where, you know, um, I got to find a way to, you know, get my family out of the situation so we ain't got to worry about, you know, if we go outside and there's a shoot, we might get hit, you know. So um, trying to have an opportunity to, you know, change my family life, um, create a platform where I can help these kids and trying to help them change them lives, their lives and their family lives as well. So, um, you know, I can go on and on, but it, it, it's truly a blessing, you know. Definitely. Yeah. What about you, Erica? Are you like just um, going in? How how have you seen like his growth and the, the impact that Pittsburgh is <laughs> laughing the the impact that Pittsburgh has had on his life? So, um, I mean, Pittsburgh is home, you know, for him, and and I just think his growth is attributed so much to his family, to everything that's been instilled in him by his parents, to the close relationship he has with with his siblings to, you know, his kids being probably the biggest reasons why he continues to push hard and push forward every day. Um, and with them being born in Pittsburgh, having a better life for them, um, you know, making sure that they're growing up being the leaders um, that they can be. And, um, and I just, I think it's, it's, it's stuff, everything that's been instilled in him by his parents is stuff that he instills in his kids and, um, you know, it just as far as pushing them forward, there's little sayings that he'll always say, and I don't want to mess them up because, you know, like that his father instilled in him, uh, while everyone else is sleeping, you're up grinding, um, when everybody else is sleeping, you up working. Yeah. You, you know, up working. My, my dad used to tell me that when I was in high school, we used to work out four 30 in the morning before school. You know, my dad used to always, he always used to have saying whole work pay off, you know, when everybody else is sleeping, you working. And as a kid, you like, all right, Dad, I, I hear you, man. Like, you know, he said it so much, but, you know, to really see, you know, f from what I was doing in closed door, nobody knew I was working at a 430, but me and my dad. So, you know, just just knowing what I was doing, the work I put in to get to where I'm at, to see that come full circle and see how it paid off, you know, that, that's why I live by hard work payoff. And I try to instill that into my kids and, and let them know, you know, if you really want something, if you put the body of work in, you know, um, I truly believe that, you know, that that dream will come true, whatever it is. You know, we, we ain't just talking about sports. You try to instill that to these kids as well. It ain't, it ain't always about sports, you know, because mm -hmm. the reality of a lot of people want to go to, to the next level, to the NFL, the NBA. Everybody don't make it, you know, that, that's just reality, you know. So um, you got to understand that and understand that, you know, you got to have a, a, a goal between just going making it to the, to the NFL or the NBA. You know, you can be a teacher. That's success, you know. If, if you accomplish something that you're you're striving for, that, that's success. Money don't don't you know show success in my eyes. You know, I feel like you you got a goal, you got something that you want to accomplish. Mm -hmm. That's a teacher or um, a doctor or, or whatever the case may be. If if, that, if that's your dream and, and you accomplish that, that's success. Yeah. You know, so you try to put that into these kids. So you know they won't they, they won't just keep thinking about a dollar sign or money or money or money and understand that you know you can do great things without having money as well. So. Especially with today's kids. Now go ahead, everybody. Yeah. Oh no, I was gonna say with that, he's probably one of the most disciplined humans I've ever met in my whole entire life. With mm -hmm. 
everything, whether that's eating habits, working out, staying on a schedule, yeah, always you, you know, schedule. like it's just mm-hmm. throughout life, you know, mm-hmm. the, everything stays clean in the house. Like he is just, it's just super, super disciplined across the board. And, you know, and, and I've seen moments just thinking about education and, and the young kids, you know, even just talking with young kids, it's, you know, he always, just like he said before, it's not just about sports. It's not just about money. It's whatever you want to do, whatever you want to achieve. And I've seen him talk to uh, young men and women and, you know, maybe their grades aren't great in school. And he's like, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, no matter if you want to be a football player, no matter if you want to be a doctor or a teacher, whatever it is that you want to do, you need to make sure that first and foremost, your grades are up. Make sure you have respect for your teachers. Make yeah. sure you have respect for your parents and guardians in your house. You know what I'm saying? Just, re- just respect the authority. And, you know, like I, I say it all the time, all of this stuff that, you know, he's instilling in, the, in his kids, everything that has been instilled in him, he is continuing that um, beyond his family to, to everybody else. And specifically, you know, just with the cohort, with the foundation, um, you know, some of the programming that's been implemented with them is, is centered around education. So for Mm -hmm. instance, um, they've got SAT and ACT prep. Mm -hmm. Um, they do individualized tutoring two times a week, um, collaborating with the students and the families and the school, um, just to make sure their attendance is being monitored, their progress, their grades, um infractions tardies all of that um and yes on on them them. and and providing um career skills training and and just continuing to mentor them and um and really just be there not to not to be somebody that's like a super disciplinarian and laying down the law but making them understand or rather helping them understand the importance of this and and helping families too like how can you help your kids with the resources that are being provided, you know, and maybe they'll help them at home, help provide a particular structure um, for their kids. But um, I mean, it's it's just unreal, this guy right here. (laughs) (laughs) You can't get to where you are today without all that stuff, so. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then you think about like the kids today and especially with Instagram, all they really see is like the instant success Mm -hmm. and that's what they get enamored with, but no one really, I guess it's not the sexy thing to post, but like the yeah, work exactly. you put in to get there, no one really sees You just that. see the accomplishment. You don't see yeah. what goes behind closed doors to get to that point, to, you know, to be able to have the opportunity to, to, to show off whatever, whatever it is, if it, it's a jewelry, cars, but but you got to, you know, I sacrifice to, to, to get to that and, and accomplish that, and that's putting the work in, so. Yeah, and like, again, you don't necessarily have to be an athlete because it's even like sports anchors who make, just as mm-hmm. much money as like a yeah. mid-level NBA player or something like that, you know. Yeah. That could be any one of these kids you're mentoring through your foundation. So yeah. Exactly. And then last question for you guys. So how did the the foundation come into fruition? And like speak on the work you've been doing recently. Yeah. Well, um honestly, well, you know, my trainer I've been working with since high school and Dwayne Brown, you know, he got a foundation, it's two temps. Mm-hmm. So um, before I had my foundation, I, I I was already doing a lot of this, you know, talking with the kids, letting the kids work out with me, joking around with them and, and you know, give them some knowledge like that. You know, my trainer was like, man, you should create your own foundation. And, and, I, and we kind of he kind of helped me, you know, create my foundation. And then once my sister jumped on board and kind of like, you know, got the ball rolling and got things to the next level. So uh, it, it was more something that I was already doing to the point where I just created my own, just using my platform I have and you know, creating something that's mine and, 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 you know, creating it with my family, um, you know, they're trying to help these kids and, and, and give them knowledge and give these kids opportunities, as much opportunities as we can, as I can, um, you know, um, it, it, it was a blessing, you know, yeah. it, it truly was, I, I truly believe that because, you know, we, we always talk about, um, you know, what can we do to, you know, change certain situations that's going on in our, in our communities, in our neighborhoods and, you know, I, I, I think that start with not, you know, not just growing up from the place and just forgetting about it, but, you know, you get into a certain plat to, to, a, to a certain place where you can use your platform and, and come back to your community and help build that community up as well, you know, and help the next generation. Um, I, I feel like that's what's going to, you know, change our communities and, 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 and change certain things that's going on in our communities as far as, you know, the murders, the, 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 these kids getting arrested for, you know, 
selling drugs or whatever the case may be. So just trying to change that, you know, so so, so just change the generation and what we we usually see from a, a black male, pretty much, you know, yeah. the, it, it's tiring to keep seeing it over and over again. And then, you know, you, you got a cop that drive past us and, and see a black man, and, you know, and, and just assume that he's doing the wrong thing and, and, and to get out the car and arrest him or, mm-hmm. or mess around and shoot him for no reason. So um, we we want to change that 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 face that you see on a black male to, you know, um, to see that we can be doctors, we can be teachers, we can be astronauts, we can do the same thing that any other person in this world can do. Yeah. Um, and, and I start from, you know, doing little things like this that start little, that grow huge. Cause you know, um, we coming back and we helping our community, we helping this youth and, and that's going, you know, you know, that's going to change the next generation and next generation and hopefully, you know, not choose that route, but choose this route, and that's and the route that they choose is gonna be the route, right? The right, the right route to choose. So yeah, yeah. And in less than three years, the foundation has impacted 9,100 individuals directly. Um, and you know, just like Aaron mentioned, especially in Pittsburgh, there's there's no secret of the economic, educational, and mental challenges that are facing um, you know underserved youth, um, specifically black males and. Um, the foundation's goal is to really, um, from an educational standpoint, bridge the gap between um, traditional and education and, and what's available in, um, in lower economic areas to low income use and, and really expose these kids and provide them with a- as many opportunities as we possibly can. Um, mm-hmm. And, and that's just the work that we're doing. That's the work that we're going to continue doing. And um, just to see Aaron's vision come to life, you know, along with his sister, you mentioned who is the executive director of the foundation, um, you know, who are, are honestly just working tirelessly yes. to, mm-hmm. to just try to make a dent in the world. You know, um, it, it's, not easy to change the world, but um, you can do it one step at a time, one kid at a time, um, and, and just hope that that mission continues to spread um, and and just hope that it really is able to impact individuals across the board. And, um, you know, it's a blessing to be able to start it in Pittsburgh, yeah. um, but obviously want to try to branch touch. out and, and help as many kids in different cities, areas as, as we can. But, yeah. you know, we, we started in Pittsburgh and, and, and we're going to continue to grow to the point where we'll be able to have the opportunity to branch out in different cities and, and, and help other, you know, help kids, as many kids as we can, you know, because um, it, it ain't just happening in one city, you know, it's all over the world. So, um, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna try to definitely you know put a dent in the world in a, in a positive way and, and trying to help as many of these young kids as we can so definitely and then um yeah when we had one of the early episodes with like Melo D Wade and Chris they're expressing the same kind of sentiments and then like uh one of the quotes I mentioned from Muhammad Ali was service to others is the rent you pay for your room here on earth so I feel like it's super important especially for people in your position to really you know, get back to the kids so you can inspire the next generation to, to do the same. Yeah, exactly. And I always say, man, um, it's a difference from giving back and just doing it and not really caring. You know, there's mm-hmm. a lot of people that just try to throw money at something. And, but, you know, it, it's a it's a whole different world when you actually you get the opportunity to, to talk to these kids face to face. Um, you get kind of build a relationship with them. They train with you. You just, you know, you want them kids to, to know that what you're saying and what you you school them to is real. They don't want to feel like it's fake or, you know, so I always trying to be as real as I can with these kids and let these kids know that, you know, um, dreams come true. You know, I was once in a position where, you know, I remember as a kid, you know, th- wishing I could look into the future and see if I make it to the NFL, you know, honestly. So it would to, to really be where I'm at and accomplish this, it, like, it, like I, it's, it's really a dream come true. You know, and I always tell people, I want, I want as many kids as, as, in, as I can to the opportunity to live out their dreams, whatever it is. I want them to, you know, feel how I feel, you know, because once you accomplish something that you work, you know, work your ass off to get, you know, um, it, it ain't no better feeling than that, you know. So, um, you know, it was it was instilled into me at a young age, you know, you, you kind of you, you kind of grow and, and bloom and then you trying to, you know, plant that seed on to, to the point where it continue to, to, you know, create more, so. Definitely. Cool, so. So wrap for this episode, um, you know, JD and Finish Line, we love what you're doing with the foundation. So we want to make a nice uh, models donation to it. 
I'm gonna pull out the checkbook real quick. So you can donate a cool ten thousand to the eight ninety nine Solutions Foundation. Um, especially having this conversation and just seeing the work you're doing, and I know this ten thousand will go a long way to the kids and the lives you've been impacting with it. So I truly appreciate that, man. That's huge. I really yeah. do, man. Honestly, thank you. Thank you. So yeah, and thank you guys for the time. Especially our surprise guest, Erica. You've been providing us with great info on the foundation as well. Um, what else? Make sure you guys follow Aaron and Erica on Instagram as well. And their social channels just across Twitter and everything along with the foundation and see what they're working on next. And I mean, that's it for me, unless you guys have something else to add. Uh, appreciate yeah. you guys, man, for having us, man. It was a, the dope interview. Thank you for the donation. That's huge. Um, can't thank you enough for that, man. Yeah, and thank you. Love what y'all are doing. Um, you know, it's it's always nice to see athletes humanized and see the work that they're doing behind the scenes that you may not always hear about and see. Um, so so this is awesome. Like Aaron said, we appreciate you for having us. No, oh, pleasure as always. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> All right. All right. Bye. Bye.